starts like this, or whether he turns and pops it. So, bam, bam, boom. Whether I hit him or not, let's just say, man, I make a little hit. Not a great hit, but bam, I hit him in the face. Hits him off the side of the cheek. Doesn't do any real damage. This hand, I believe or know, is coming. Doesn't really matter. All I have to do is I'm here. Remember, I got it here. Boom. All I have to do is turn here. Now I'm on the side of it. That punch, he's going to have to move now because he can't just go like this and hit me now. He's going to have to turn. As he's turning, as I did in the other video, here, okay, this, 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 then I did the Koshi, here, come under, grab it like this, use my hips and throw them over my hips, it'll go from this side of my body, over my hips, to the ground, Koshi Nage. Bam, 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 boom. Okay, it didn't really hit. I believe that hand's coming. I don't care if it does or not, but I believe it is. I want to come over here just to make sure. This hand here. Boom. Boom, boom, boom. Now I got him here. I'm on his side. Take this leg, the leg that's back. I step across his body. Across his body. Flip him over. Any one of those techniques is a viable technique. Uh, you don't want to do them all, and you don't necessarily want to do them in that order. You're not going to. His arm is staying out. He punches, and his arm stays there so that you can do this. And you hit him, and then you grab him here. You shove him up against the wall. And after you shove him up against the wall, you break his arm this way. And after you break his arm this way, he still has it extended out because he does. You wrap it up here, snap, you break it again. That's two breaks in the same place, but he still doesn't move his arm. He still doesn't defend himself. So I roll this away, and then I break his arm again and throw him over my hips. Swing! Doesn't happen. Anybody who sees that in this technique or techniques, anybody who sees it that way doesn't understand the principles and what I'm going for. Because I can visualize movement that this is not doing. I have to be able to visualize movement that this can't do. This is not an intelligent person. It's a bunch of rubber, wood, and nails and screws. It doesn't think. But what I'm practicing for does think. And as long as I understand how they think and what they're going to do most likely, then I can imagine this doing that. And that's the key to training with inanimate objects, is to be able to imagine and to know what a real person most likely will do. Now, I'm not going to say I'm going to get it right every time, but that's why I practice more than one thing, because that gives me more than one concept and idea to work on. So as that person punches me, when I do this, when I do this technique, and when you see it on the video, you see this, bam, 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 kick, you know, boom, snap, crackle, pop, wah, 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 blam. All right, that's what you see. But that's not everything that's going on. What's going on is this person attacking me. I'm hitting their shoulder, sliding down their arm, whether it's punching out, whether it's in some form of retraction, or whether it's completely retracted back. I don't care, because I've got their shoulder, and I'm going down their arm regardless. Boom. I've got them. This comes up, because I've already got a hold of them. This comes up in another contact. Boom. Now, boom. Smack right in the face. Now, like I
fucking smack him. I don't care. I can put my hand up there. I don't have to hit him. Boom. If I just, if I just do that, you're going to, you know, a person's going to react. Move their head back or blink or, you know, I may accidentally or on purpose hit them in the eyes. So when you see a technique, don't assume that what you're watching is what you're seeing. Because what you see and what you watch may be two completely different things. And uh, that's kind of how a few people who watched my video on this tire dummy did. They watched it, but they didn't see anything. And I can understand that. I'm the same way with a lot of stuff. There's, there's certain styles, there's certain people, you know, there's certain techniques that either I don't understand why they're doing them that way, or I just don't really care why they're doing it that way, because it's not something I would do, or it's not something I would do that way. So I'm, I'm the same way about a lot of things. I just try not to express some kind of attitude about it until I believe I'm seeing it. Once I once I believe I've seen it, then if I disagree with it, then I'll suggest you know, hey, can you explain to me why you know this is happening or why this is going on? Now I've done that. I've questioned things because I do that. I'll question anything. I I have no faith in anything. Faith is a belief and a following without question. Look it up. I have no faith in anything. And to me, that's not a negative. I'm going to question everything. If, when you stop questioning, that's when you become a slave. So, feel free to question me completely. I, I'm not asking for people to have faith in me. And, and the contrary, I demand that they don't have faith in me. I don't want someone to just blindly believe what I do is right. I, I don't want that because I'm not giving it to anybody else. Anybody. So, when I question something, I'm legitimately wanting to understand why 